While it may be cold outside, things are getting toasty warm at Global Voice Broadcasting. Heat up your winter nights with the hottest topics, the hottest celebrities, and today's best music. It's why Global Voice Broadcasting is becoming your 24-7 home for the music and talk you want right now. Discover your favorite shows and music anytime at globalvoicebroadcasting.com. You want to get fit and you want to look hot. It's the weekend and it's time to tackle fitness at its core. We'll tone up your health, wellness, and nutrition from the inside out. Unlike anything you've ever heard before. We'll shape up your life and have fun doing it while motivating you to your full potential. So hang up the suit and get ready to work it. It's Fitness Friday with your two smart dumbbells. I'm the cat with the bass and drum. Happy Fitness Friday, everybody. It is the end of January. Andrew, I don't know if you know this, but but it is the it's the end of January. Like you got one day left. One, one whole day. You are a month into 2015 and by no means anywhere near where you have to go back to today. That's true. That's, That's very, very true. true. It's very yeah. true. Ladies and gentlemen, I could not be more excited. Fresh Fresh off the boat, I guess you could call it the boat. <laughs> the, the, the sky boat, yeah. we could say. The Airbus. The Airbus. Yeah. It's the Airbus. I have one of my closest friends from San Antonio, Texas. Hey. Except he's not from San Antonio anymore. No. He's from London. Ladies and gentlemen, Andrew Morrill is here. Hey. Hey, hey, everybody. He really, you really do exist. That's the I fun do. thing. You, I do. We don't well, just... It is so exciting to actually be here after listening day after day, Friday after Friday. I am now in studio you on are Fitness Friday. in the dumbbell chair. Happy Fitness Friday, Andrew. Thank you. Happy Fitness Friday to everyone. You know, we're, I'm not going to lie to anybody because it is your last day here. We started the day off with the mimosa. We because, did. Because that's what you do on yeah. Fitness Friday. Absolutely. You know, you have to celebrate it. You do. Not... You have to have your little cheats. And a mimosa was ours today. Did you just refer to alcohol? Was cheating because no. it's, you know that that's one thing that no, none of our dumbbells take into consideration. For those of you who are sober, I was more thinking about I was more out. thinking about the sugar in the mimosa. That's true, that's but yeah, I'm, I also don't even shy away from sugar. No. It's fine. It's fine. Happy Fitness Friday, Andrew. <laughs> we Fitness are Friday. live at the Global Voice Broadcasting Studios. Um, we were celebrating this morning because we have had an incredible week. We have of exercise, fun. Uh, the full Los Angeles experience. I certainly have, absolutely. I became an honorary foreign correspondent member of, what is it? The Dumbbell the Club. The Dumbbell Club, which was just amazing. The Dumbbell Club uh, has been working pretty hard in the last little bit. Yeah, it did. I'm not going to lie, Danny Mills did warn you about he the did. Dumbbell Club. He did, he certainly did, and he, everything he said was accurate. Well, you know, uh, the father... The father did get to experience the Dumbbell Club when he was out here. Yeah. Um, it is it is no joke. For the rest of you who might not know what we're talking about, um, <laughs> Jamie Granger, Scott Kuhagen, and I have all been on this crazy workout adventure known as a strength cycle for what seems like an eternity at this point. Yes. I mean, basically since September. And um, it's it's quite it's quite the schedule. But yeah. Andrew, yeah. being that he is my star trainee from across the pond, Twitter trainer across the pond. I think I'm the Twitter trainer. You are. You are the Twitter. I'm trainee. the Twitter trainee. Yeah. That's okay. Right. That's fair right. enough. Fair enough. Still hasn't learned your place. <laughs> <laughs> We've been working on that all week. You still haven't learned your place. Uh, um, but there. seriously, so you come in. Uh, you're here. I am. Finally, you do exist. It is not just a. Twitter relationship. No, it's and I guess real, Brandon. It's real. We should wind everybody back. I've known Andrew since I think Andrew and I knew Andrew. Yeah. Um, you and my sister went to high school together. We did. Um, my other lovely dumbbellette, Miss yes. Ashley Mills. We yes, should, yes. Should Love tell her. Ashley. Hello. Hey, Ashley, shout since, out. Since our, our last conversation was... Brief. Yes, it was. Brief and on FaceTime. <laughs> um, Andrew and Ashley went to high school together. I, of course, knew Andrew through my sister. Um, we all grew up, went in separate directions. Yep. And then the funny thing is, and anyone who um, has kept in contact with people who you've known your whole life, we still all go back home for Christmas. Absolutely. And that's really the only times I get to see Ashley a, a few a, on a few occasions because yeah. she is my sister, but she doesn't really ever get to come out here. No. And I don't get to go home as much as I'd like to. And then especially what we will get to is after your world travels, yeah. Andrew's lived all over the place, guys. I you, did. You I will did. you will learn this over the course of the next forty minutes. However, <laughs> uh, we always meet back up at Christmas time, and that's like the only time that we really yeah. do get to see each other. Yeah. But the funny thing is, Andrew, is that we have this crazy relationship that we maintain through 
social media. Yeah, it's really made it possible, which has been great. And you know? it's one of those things like your version of social media mm -hmm. versus my version of social mm -hmm. media mm -hmm. <laughs> are basically polar opposites. <laughs> yeah. But at the same time, because of the working relationship that we have yeah. in fitness and health, uh, it somehow meets in the middle. Yeah, we can we can meet there. Yeah, and at least if it meets in the middle, it's usually just we're tagging each other. <laughs> exactly. And tweeting, we kind of we kind tweeting of pull, back and forth. we pull each other to the different direction it, that we are. It's and true. Yes, it's we make true. each other better. The fun thing is now. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, we do. The fun thing is now is that San Antonio is literally our hubcap. It is for everything because I'm here. Andrew lives currently in London. I do. I live you, in London. He is a working fitness model. If if you haven't uh, tuned in yet, we are live on. GVBradio.com slash dumbbells. You can look at his mug. You can't, oh. you know, we should make you stand up and do a spin. We'll oh, do that later. Okay, yeah, um, the picture that, that I posted, yeah. Andrew's a big boy. Andrew is not <laughs> Andrew is not a catwalk model. No. Andrew is no. not a theory model. No. Um, Andrew works purely in fitness modeling. I do. And what I wanted to bring in bring you in here and talk about today is not only the relationship that we have as long distance trainer and trainee, but um, how fitness is different for you. Sure, because absolutely. Because you and I growing up when we first knew each other were tiny little twinks yeah. who were in San Antonio with literally no concept of fitness. Like no. We played sports in no. St. Mary's yeah. Hall, great. But um, it wasn't anything that was super serious. And yeah. I will never forget, like I was telling you last night at dinner, one of the things when I first got heavily involved in fitness was mm. that everybody... Uh, even when I went to USC, I was pre-med, and then going yep. when I switched to kinesiology, everyone in San Antonio was just like, what? Yeah. You're doing what? <laughs> what do you have anything to do with exercise? Like, you didn't do anything. No, so I know, yeah. You, you played volleyball and pole vault. And like, yeah, I was, even, I was even worse. I didn't really even play sports, you know, in high school. I, I sort of, I did in middle school. I played lacrosse, and when I was young, I we you all know, played I did lacrosse in soccer and baseball and all that. But when I was in high school, I don't, I don't recall, I think I did track and tennis, you know, so really not, not particularly heavy sportage either. So Listen, Andrew, don't you discount running and oh but tennis. i hate running now oh I man too. i hate it i know i couldn't it's believe such a, I got it's such a reversal <laughs> <laughs> come from one extreme yeah. to the other but the yeah. difference is and my question to start everything off is is when you left you went to trinity I in did. san yep. antonio trinity. so you were held in hostage purgatory for a lot longer than i was yeah. i flew the coop <laughs> um but you graduated from trinity in san antonio had you gotten into health and fitness by the time you were done in college you know i had um i i, I was just thinking about it. I started going to the gym at around you know fifteen, sixteen. Mm -hmm. But but these when were we all do. when we all do. But these were these were you know embryonic gym visits where you kind of go around and you <laughs> you you just you just do a little two seconds of this, two seconds of that. You know, with with no chest real purpose. Every exactly, day. little little chest press every day. Bicep you know, curls bicep every curls day. every day. Yes, yes, we've all done it. Uh -huh. um, so I really didn't start to get serious about it until. Um, I actually moved to to Hong Kong, which was the first place that I lived right after I graduated. Um, right after I graduated you school, you didn't go to Hong Kong for modeling. I did not go to Hong Kong for modeling. I actually had a real job then, and <laughs> you had a, a very I had a nerdy. Funny, I had a nerdy, funny job. I worked for a a, a toy company. Yes, um, that made little cast metal toy soldiers. How the hell did you find that? You know, it's funny because my my undergraduate degree, um, I had a really strange combination. I was a marketing major uh -huh. and a double major in art history. And what do you do with that? You well, make toys. You make toys. You go to a company <laughs> that makes historical miniatures. And so that's what God, I did. And I forgot I, that that's what it was. Yeah, historical miniatures. Historical miniatures. And I wrote, wrote copy for them for their mm -hmm. advertisement. So that was what I did. But but as I was there, um, you know, being a Westerner in Hong Kong, you kind of get some attention. I had done modeling um, you know, in San Antonio and had done it, you know, in college as sort of a part time thing. But um, really is is where it took off was when I was in Hong Kong. Um, where did it take off in Hong Kong? There was a magazine called Mr. Mr., which is still around, yep. and um, they uh, were looking for, one of my friends uh, had uh, got an, uh, an article to be written about a dance studio that she did um, in a dance style called Ciroc. Um, 
Not the alcohol. Yeah, not the alcohol, but but same name. You know, I had I didn't know anything about it. I'd been to one class, um, but they needed a model, <laughs> somebody who looked like they did the dance to to do this photo shoot. Mm -hmm. And so so I did that, and uh, I remember it was it was great fun. They gave me a Vivian Westwood snakeskin suit nice. to wear. It was great, and um, and I just sort of jumped around, and they threw giant styrofoam balls at me, and it was great fun. So that was my first big shoot in Hong Kong, and things kind of took off from there. And did um, you just completely catch the bug from that point on? I did. You know, I did. Um, and I, I, I looked a little bit different then. You know, I was, I was quite, quite a bit thinner. Um, I'm currently, I do kilos now, but it's around 210. He's, ladies and gentlemen, he's completely forgotten where he came from. Yeah, I, I'm going to apologize I do kilo, for him. I'm sorry. Yeah. It's, you Between the conversion. kilos and the and the Celsius, I just I'm sorry. I oh apologize. God, do you really I do know, the weather in Celsius? Yeah, and do you know how hard it was for me to not say advertisements just right then? Yeah. What has happened? I know. I'm sorry. Where have you been? I don't know. <laughs> anyway, so I was you know, I was about one one sixty was what I was uh -huh. all in in college and stuff. It was um, a solid one sixty. One sixty, yeah. It was I mean it was solid, but I was I was slider. Um and they uh, they wanted a little bit bigger look in Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. um, they wanted me to be you know larger, and so I thought, okay, well um, I'll see what I can do. And so I got myself a trainer, and um, you know just in Hong Kong. In Hong Kong, just yeah. talk me through that because you and I didn't start really doing the training thing until you were in London. Exactly. Yeah. So and I knew because at that point you had already and we'll get there been successfully modeling mm -hmm. and had very clear cut goals that needed to be accomplished. Yes. So you knew what you were doing. Your trainer that you hired in Hong Kong, yeah, was that a trainer in a similar way that you and I work, where it's like, we've got to do this, this, and this, or was it just no. I want to work out? It was what what initially it was um, was I used the trainer really to get me to the gym mm -hmm. because I was working fairly long hours um, with my job and I would be exhausted when I was done, mm -hmm. and it was dark and I just sometimes wouldn't go <laughs> and so as is typical as is typical excuses and, happen yeah excuses happen and even so in Hong Kong what I did was I I purposefully got the trainer not so much I mean I, I knew that he would teach me things and I knew that that was you know going to be helpful but I really just wanted someone to hold me accountable sure. you know hold me accountable make sure that I go God, that sounds familiar and, yeah and and getting into that rhythm was really probably the the biggest first step that I did um and that pretty much anybody does when when you start to train and want to work out and do all that you need to you need to put the time in right um and so that was that was the first big step I mean he was he was an okay trainer he was he was fine taught me a few things but mm -hmm. but really it was just getting onto the schedule getting to the commitment to actually be there yeah. Um, that that was the first thing. How did how did that fitness base that you had started to develop, and yeah. at that point, because you are working with someone who is a professional, sure. How did that translate itself into the mentality that you have to have? Because as a model, it's not mm. it's not necessarily a health driven fitness. No. And I have no problem saying that because it's the truth. Yeah. However. It's it's very goal driven, which is what makes it amazing yes. because you have clear cut things that agents and managers are telling you you have Absolutely. to achieve, that art directors are saying we need for this shoot yep. that can be very momentary where you might get a shoot a week before mm. that tells you you need to lean out. Yeah. And it's not you don't go about it the healthiest ways. However, yeah. Ment mentally, yeah. how did that shift happen? And was that in Con Hong Kong when you were saying like I'm gonna have to start looking at fitness from Differently. the terms of my profession? Yeah, I mean, it, it, it probably would have more been in London um, because it that um, side of things developed more as I did the modeling more, mm -hmm. um, which really didn't take take off take full time until till I was in London. And but you're correct. Um, you know, the, there are uh, there are differences. You have different goals, I, I think, when you're just training to be healthy and when you're training for an aesthetic purpose. Sure. Um, and, you know, the other thing about modeling in particular is that there, there are many there are different types of models and there are mm -hmm. different sizes of models and um you know you need to find your niche <laughs> and and Truth. the the uh, you know different parts of the world have different um different size requirements as well so yeah. you know american models tend to be a little bit bigger typical sample sizes are larger european models are a little smaller so people can give you advice it depends where you're working mm -hmm. um you know if you're working in um you know, in, in the U.S., if you're working in South Africa, if you're working in uh, Europe, you're going to have different asks from people, um, whether that is, you know, lose weight, gain weight, yes. <laughs> get cut, don't be cut. Um, my general rule of thumb um, that I've been at, you know, 
recently is is I try and maintain a level of physique that is somewhere in a happy medium mm -hmm. so that if if required I can blow you know up. blow up and if required I can cut down a bit but you know you are frequently not given very much time that's yeah, true like not um, at all you know and they'll say you know you have two three days can you can you do this and in in those instances you you sometimes if they want you to be cut you kind of have to you know do do a few things that, <laughs> it's true. that don't feel so good and maybe aren't the healthiest but um but it, it is it's just the price of what you do and i mean it's, it's speaking in terms of evolution the evolution of how you consider fitness yep. and the only reason that i really do feel better out of it because i'm in control of it a lot of the time mm -hmm. however I really feel like you evolutionarily have learned because we do kind of keep you in that happy medium yeah. where it is you can go about making those changes quickly. And yeah, I know that absolutely. especially like even when I started talking to you seriously about exercise, mm. you had a big base of what it took to attain both of those results mm -hmm. before you started asking me questions on yeah. it. How has that evolved in terms of the way that you actually view your health and fitness like because I know we'll, we'll go we'll go back to the barbell club yeah I knew that when you were here one you had shoots that you were doing which is why Andrew is in Los Angeles mm -hmm. um, you had those that you had to do but at the same time I knew that your body was where it needed to be for those shoots so yeah. like, I wasn't worried about you know oh well, let's just get this last minute workout and get it yeah, just yeah, yeah. right I mean a little bit you saw sure. me change a few things that we did yeah but overall I wanted you to feel something completely different in terms of like a strength scale yep, yep. How has that changed the way that you think about fitness? Do you just kind of keep in a maintenance pattern yeah. now that you've gotten to that size? I, I do. You know, I'm fairly happy with the size that I am now. And I've kind of reached. Thank God. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's you all know, I needed here, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, the show's it. over. Great My show. job here Thanks, is done. Guys. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> Later. Um, I mean, there's. Uh, with the type of modeling that I do, you have, I, I sort of dance on the cusp between commercial, what I call commercial, and fitness. And those two looks, you can kind of go in between, mm -hmm. but you know, you, you don't want to go too much to one side because you get more work. If yeah. you can go either way, then you'll get more work. And mm -hmm. so the size that I am now, um, the, the, the level of dryness that I have now allows dryness. you dryness. Yes. Well, dryness, dryness well, Andrew. The, <laughs> allows you to, uh, allows you to, to get jobs from both sides mm -hmm. because commercial commercially, you need to have a body that looks like it's attainable, yeah. um, to the general public, you know, otherwise it, I mean, I'm going to just be completely honest with you. I don't yeah. really think you have a body that looks attainable. Well, with, within a commercial, <laughs> come within, on, within a commercial this is sphere, not what we work on. within a commercial <laughs> sphere, I think it is, you know, I mean, it's, it's different than say your covers of your muscle and fitness or, you know, your True. really, really hard cut bodybuilder magazines. Well, if, yeah. not looking real. Exactly. You don't look real. Yes. And so, you know, you're not going to see that person on the cover of an underwear box because that isn't what not people who are wearing the underwear not people who are wearing the underwear and it's not what people want to buy and you know and that's so my so question so. to you Andrew and it's the one thing like listen I'm on a completely different side of this equation like my life day in and day out is health and wellness on a very healthy scale yep I'm not saying what you do is unhealthy mm -hmm. because I know what you do. It's it's just the way that you have to go about doing things for your job. Yeah. It is literally your job, your moneymaker, to look a certain way. And on my side, do I have those pressures as a trainer? Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. I feel like I need to stay in good shape and, you know, sometimes I want to be bigger or a little more cut out if it's summertime because yep. it, when, when I look that way, I know it makes my clients be like, okay, he knows what he's doing. Yeah. My question to you is, and it's something that I honestly don't think that I could do, and you're going to laugh and say, of course, you're doing it right now. <laughs> However, how and where did that shift in your mind go from saying that you were just going to be working out yeah. and doing fitness yeah. to doing fitness to literally put your head on the chopping block and be judged? Yeah. Yeah. Um just a masochist. I don't know. Um, but here, that's your yeah, job. Yeah, it is. Um, it is, and it's. I suppose, to me, it just it it kind of happened um, mm -hmm. because because the modeling kind of came to me, and I had success at it early on. I thought, you know, I'll just keep doing this. Mm -hmm. But you know, I mean, to some degree, I think we actually are quite similar. We both have a product <laughs> here that that, <laughs> that that we are selling, and and in many ways, the body is the reflection of that product. Truth. You're selling, you know, you're selling your fitness and you know your healthy lifestyle and so forth. And the the best example of that is yourself. Um, mine is a little more literal. You know, people are hiring me 
you know, to, you know, flog their underwear brands. But, it's true. Um, you know, based on how you look. But but in a, in a way, it's the product that we're selling, that we're both selling is ourselves. And so, um, you know, I think that making sure that, <laughs> for me, that that, you know, looks right is, is obviously important. Well, it's definitely working. Yeah. And I'm proud of it. I mean, I get to see it all you the time. You do, but it's working in large part thanks to you, Brandon. Well, you know, thank you, Andrew. Yes. I don't go and do the work. No, you don't, it but just, you give good advice. <laughs> <laughs> just tell you what to do. Yeah. And, and I mean, that's, that's the other part that I think is interesting to talk about. And yeah. Things that I think not only do a lot of trainers not understand, but a lot of people don't think that they can do. You and I have worked together both when you have an actual trainer that is yep. on top of you every day yep. and now when you don't. Yes. And the difference is, you know, I think it's very easy when you know someone mm -hmm. or when you've created a relationship and you know that, like, I know that if I send you your workout, you're mm -hmm. going to do it. Yeah. And you are going to do it as if I were there. Now, listen, you and I have got a time spread yeah. that is not to be screwed around with. <laughs> not fun. <laughs> like, yeah. barely ever get to physically speak to each other. Yeah. And it's not, it's not it, that it's impossible. It's just, it doesn't work. Yeah. By the time that I get up and I'm moving, I know that you've already had to have gone and done your workout from whatever I've sent you. Yeah. So I think for a lot of trainers, the relationship that you and I have mm. is an interesting concept mm -hmm. because I have control of what's going on and sure. I've never even had to worry about it. Like in my mind, it's been crazy that you've been here this week Yeah. because... I never get to actually see you, but at the same time, I feel like I do almost every day because yeah. of the way that we go about training. Yeah, I mean, you're right. Um, in the, the the type of training relationship that we have, it is unique, you know, um, or, or there are challenges to it. And True. probably the biggest challenge that you would have is that both sides really need to be committed, but particularly the side who is being trained, mm -hmm. you know. So so many of us who, who have had trainers or, you know, been at the gym, it's very easy to, you know, not want to do the rep or, yeah. you know. Be oh, he's not here. Be not there. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just going to leave out exactly. those kettlebells. So, so today. how easy would that be? But you have to have your commitment, you know, and that that comes from you. That comes from your side and and what you're wanting to do, right. you know, um, giving yourself goals. And you know, for me, it might be a little easier because you know any <laughs> any imperfections that I have are going to be blown up times ten and put on <laughs> <It's true. laughs> put on true. somewhere. So that's Excuse hella me, good, can we hella post, good motivation. Can we put some Photoshop into this contract? Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> I need to inflate my left breast. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but um, aside from that, uh, the the interaction that we have on on social media, it it is it is it's exactly what I need mm -hmm. most of the time because I have had trainers in the past. I I know roughly what I'm doing at the gym, but it is it is a great resource to me to have someone to be able to to speak to, to get new ideas from, to you know to shock the body and change things up, and you know because you just go through the same routine and you get repetitive yeah, and you it lose results boring. and and so to have um to have you as a resource has been you know really useful. Well, and the difference also I think is that I also know that you are not quite in the same place you were when you were in Hong Kong. Like no. You, you, ha you have a motivation now yeah. to get to the gym, and it's not a trainer. No. Because I know that even if I disappeared tomorrow, you're still going to go work your ass off every day to keep up what you have to keep up. And ladies and gentlemen, for anyone who doesn't think or may not know what it takes to keep that kind of size, mm. that's a full-time job. Yeah, a lot of eating. It's a lot of eating, <laughs> but it's also a lot of time in the gym. Like, yeah, you don't just go shove pancakes no. in your face. Like, no. you eat. Well, no, I don't mean that kind of eating. <laughs> sure. I have single handedly, single handedly increased the turkey consum consumption in Britain, I am certain, by and about that's 50%. The other, the other thing is, y'all's diet over there it is, is so different. It is different. very, very like, different. And I love, love coming to Los Angeles because it is. I mean, almond milk lattes and things like that. These things do not exist. Lettuce wrapped in, burgers. Lettuce wrapped burgers. I they took do Andrew not exist for a burger the other day in London, and I ordered my burger protein <laughs> sound. He looks at me. He goes, "What? What? What is this? And the woman, what is this goodness?" The woman was just like, "Yeah, totally. Yeah. Would you like yours protein sound?" He goes, "What is that?" I said, "It means it's lettuce wrap." Yeah, and she just she looked at, she explosion. looked at me like you know people ask for it every day. You can't. Do they that do. In London. You can't do that. No, we we absolutely not. do. Yeah, I mean, I think London has always been a little bit behind. Um, in terms of its its uh, fitness and sort of health, um, food wise, mm -hmm. um, and you know your gluten frees and your you know dairy frees and things like that are are ma slowly making their way across. Um, but there just either wasn't a market or just hadn't been exposed to it. But 
when I come to Los Angeles, it is so much fun. It's so much easier. You know, you can you can go to places that specifically cater for you know all. your <laughs> your healthy diet as opposed to kind of having to pick and choose as you go. But again, um, you Does know, it make it hard over there. Like, do you have a hard time with eating? I, I tend to cook a lot of my own food. You do? My diet is very very boring, very boring. Um, <laughs> it's, I'm, I'm not gonna lie, it just is. And I tend to eat I tend to eat a lot of chicken, a lot of brown rice, and a lot of vegetables, mm -hmm. um, and turkey as well. So that doesn't sound boring to me. It it you know what? That's it's all I it's, eat. it's fortunate that I like it, you know. Um, but those who those who really enjoy their food might find it boring. But it's fortunate that well, I. It's not I, like y'all don't have like the top restaurants in no, the world. We have wonderful you can go food. To. Oh, you have wonderful food. It's really really good. It's just not the healthiest. It's heavily influenced by French food, which but isn't is that everywhere? butter, mm, mm. butter. Yeah, I mean, that is everywhere. But that's everywhere, Andrew. Like, I mean, but you also have, here, Here you also have the other options, but which this we is don't not, have as this much. This is not real life. Like, no, but this is LA. Listen, this is what we love. This is, this is Los Angeles. <laughs> this, is, this is not a real life place. This yeah. is uh, a complete little fairy tale land. It's a little microchasm, but it's fun. But it? it's just, it's because we have so many people with the same very yeah, physical exactly um, i love it it's and not even just healthy interests just yeah. there's i was reading yesterday i forgot what it's called uh ah, damn it when people it's it's not an it's the new eating disorder i tweeted about it last night but it's okay. when you're so obsessed with eating healthily yeah and of course i'm reading this article and i'm just like this sounds like every day yeah like it and I wouldn't consider this a problem, yeah. but it's also not a problem, and I understand that because every restaurant that I frequent here mm. that's not a fancy restaurant, just a casual everyday, like, let's go have lunch, mm -hmm. has all of these options. Yeah. And honestly, I've never been to a place, even when you and I go back to San Antonio, other yeah, than the fact that no. it's just Chester's oh, movies San Antonio, and La Fagata just, on repeat. It ruins my, my, my poor little diet. Oh, my poor stomach. Oh, my can't God. handle I it. It probably can't handle 10 it. pounds every time I go oh, home. Oh, man. But I tell you, the, the, the thing that I was thinking of, this is a perfect example of, of why I love Los Angeles. Panini Cafe, their breakfast, the protein breakfast. I'm telling you. I mean, it is like, it's just sitting there. It's everything I could possibly want well, for I breakfast. Eat, I'm going to miss that. eat there for breakfast that. and lunch, like, all the time. Miss it. Uh-huh. But... It's pretty. It's pretty remarkable. But yeah. you, you have to go back now mm -hmm. to the cold I do. and to <laughs> your job. Yeah, which is good. Yeah, which yeah. is good. Yeah. Where is all of this going, Andrew? Like, what? What's your end goal here? Because we've we've gotten you to a point. You're very successful at modeling. Mm -hmm. You are traveling around. You're not just in London. You sure. fly all over the place to do this in Europe. Yep. Where does this go? And does it stay in in fitness modeling? You know, I mean, of of course, with any model, there's there's you have a lifetime. Um, as as much a as shelf we, life, a shelf life, and I don't and I don't mean when you actually <laughs> you have a lifetime. Yes, and I don't. Then you die, Andrew. I don't mean when you die. <laughs> I mean when you are dead as a model. Um, I mean you do have you do have um, age limitations um, that that will sneak up on you. So. Um, my age shall remain a secret, but nonetheless, uh, <laughs> nonetheless, um, there will come a point at which you know modeling will no longer be something that I can do. But um, the base that I have, that I have, the base of knowledge that I have acquired through doing it for, through for fitness and for photography and mm -hmm. for what it is that I actually do, I think is going to be the next stage of my life. Yeah. Um, so, so that's kind of what I'm looking at. I, I have a few years yet, um, men. Thank God, have a a, a longer um, career span than than women do within this industry, and especially in the in the fitness area. Yeah. Um, you know, you can you can stretch it into your thirties. So and there's always um, Rogaine and touch for touch. You know of, what? Touch yeah, exactly. Once so, I, you know, we can just shoot from yeah, the head up. Later. It's funny. My 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 <laughs> agency is it's quite funny. They have they have a lot of people who are just approaching thirty, and then you sort of get a gap. And yep. you don't you don't have anyone, but then forty, you start getting work again. You start getting the, the 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 you know older. the CEO role, yep. the the slightly gray haired guy. I so like I'm anything. just gonna have to disappear for about five years and then pop back on. the Well, scene. I mean, it's like anything. If you stick with it and you still <clears throat> kind of stand, and you met Scott the other day, I did, my yeah. workout partner Scott yeah. Hogan was stronger than me, uh, like stronger than anybody you know. I know. <laughs> Scott, fifty three years old, not still modeling, but yeah. modeled for years and yeah. years and years, basically as a male supermodel. Yeah. I mean, flown all over the world, walking in every fashion show, working for every top designer, both in print and um, catwalk. Mm. Un unreal. And he said the same thing. He was just, you know, like, yeah, I, there was that time when it just stopped. Yeah. And then you start to get the, the feedback and, you know, do you want to play that older role? And he stuck with it. And it, yeah. it was amazing. And it worked out for him. Yeah. Back so, to the social media point. Yes. You have now created a very um, popular image base mm. of Andrew. Yeah. 
and they're people who don't know you at all. No. They're people who literally only know you through photographs. This yes. is very possibly the first time that a lot of those people will even hear your voice. Yeah, likely. And I'm sure you get a lot of kickback in terms of asking you fitness advice. And yes. I did a whole show, which you and I talked about and you consulted me on. Certification by selfie. That's right. Andrew yes. and I worked <laughs> on that show together. Go back and listen to it. Yeah. Because you you have now created a image where you appear to be a fitness expert. Yeah. Do you get questions? I, I do. I get questions do a lot. Do you answer them? What do you do? What do you right. eat? What do you this? What do you that? And, you know, it depends who's asking. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I have... I have um, I have a I have a lot of fans, and some are you know some are young you know young teenagers who I can kind of see myself in, and sure. they're just, they're just kind of probing. They they just want you know <laughs> they just want to know you know oh what do I do? What's some basics that I can do? And not you know, just doing a little chest press and exactly, some bicep curls you know, exactly. every and I, single and day. In, in that instance, you can offer broad spectrum advice. You know this is generally what you should eat. You mm -hmm. need to you know watch your proteins and make sure that you get enough carbohydrate to have energy and. Um, you know, try this move, try that, you know, that, that type of stuff I don't mind doing. Um, I am not a fitness expert in, in, in that sense. I'm not trained. My knowledge comes from what I have gathered um, from. Which, which is a lot, though. You know, it, it, it does. I mean, it, it, in, to some degree, it, wor it goes hand in hand with my job. Sure. And so I have learned, I have picked up a lot of knowledge. Mm -hmm. So I can, I can express that. Um, but I, I'm not a trainer. <laughs> and But that's the difference. And that was yeah. the thing on that show that I was pr particularly trying to create that arc in is there's a lot of trainers who get very upset yeah. by people who are popular on said Instagram, yeah. Twitter, everything else who have nothing to do with fitness and they're dishing out fitness advice. And it's just yeah. like, listen. I don't typically do it on, a, on, the, on the public scale. Right. People will send me questions and they'll ask individually and mm -hmm. those I will answer. I typically don't. Um, you know, post a workout or right. you know things like that, just because I well, don't. It's probably not also in your common thought to do that. It's not in my thought, you know, and and uh, to some degree, I'm also taking it from other people. Like mm -hmm. my workout is kind of your workout, and I don't. It's not yours, but yeah. I, it's something that you've you know, but you've created that for me. I don't want to take credit for that. I don't want to claim that my genius, you know, came up with you know this particular move. That's not that's not appropriate. That's not my thing. You know, I am. I am the trainee, not the trainer. But it's an interesting, it's an interesting um, change that happens because mm -hmm. you do, you're, you're literally put on a platform of appearing as though you have all the answers yeah. and people want what you have. Yeah. It's how do I get that? Yeah. And I think what I go back to and what I said on that show and I'll repeat now, I can never have what Andrew has. Mm -hmm. I can get Andrew there. I know how to get Andrew there. I know for me that that's not going to happen based on just my genetics and how much I'm willing to eat and... You, everything. It's just not going to happen. Yeah. And that's okay, but... Yeah, you'll have to suffer through what you have. <laughs> suffer, <laughs> suffer through this mess. Yeah. Well, um, too bad. But a lot of people do look up to you in that sense. And I, I think it's... I don't think it's a bad place to be. Like, I get really excited for, you know, 20,000 followers for you on yeah, Instagram. Just hit that this morning. It's exciting. By the way. Thank but you, that's exciting you. for you because yeah. it, it, something is working. Yeah. And, you know... A lot of people will say, like, oh, yeah, it's just people are lusting after you. Fine. Yeah. Like, let's, let's just be honest here. That's, that's, what that's, this, what I, that's why that's what your I job do. works. That's what I sell. So, um. so I'm okay <laughs> with it. Yeah. Um, and I, think it, I, I don't think it's a bad thing. Of course, I go back to everybody listening. Like, you know, if you do have questions, just remember that you might be asking somebody who might not have all the answers. Yeah. But the true answer is if you do have a question, the magical little tool at your fingertips called Google or yeah. your smartphone can basically answer any question you have from a professional yes, to achieve certain true. results. But there's nothing wrong with reaching out to somebody you admire no, and asking them how no, they got there. No, absolutely not. And, and you know, in, in some instances and to some degree, uh, you know, our chats on social media are kind of exactly that. Yeah. You know, it's just me asking you. Um, so it works for me. How long is this going to go on, Andrew? But regardless of, regardless of how long you're getting booked yeah. for jobs. Are you still interested in fitness? Yeah. I mean, Do you the thing still is, like it? The, the thing is, this this was always kind of a natural go-to place for me because mm -hmm. I like this. I like I like fitness. I like mm -hmm. taking care of myself. I like going to the gym. Um, it's an enjoyable experience. Well, I'm sure a that fun a, lifestyle. I'm sure that too. a lot of people, yeah, it's, <laughs> never complain. I'm sure a lot of people feel the same way. Yeah. So, you know, that, my relationship to fitness in that sense won't change mm -hmm. um, as, you know, even if I'm not getting booked, you know. Um, it may be a little less pressure uh, <laughs> Might make my job easier. Yeah, but um, <laughs> but 
if, if I know, you know, photographs aren't going to be taken, but, but uh, it, it's not going to, I'm not going to significantly alter my routine, yeah. um, you know, when I become too old. To well, I don't think you're in any danger of that happening <laughs> anytime soon. I also think you're not in any danger of not being booked for anything oh, for a little so. while, considering um, I've gotten you for five days, thank God, yes. off of... Uh, Jobs. Yes, yes, yes. Instead of just a joyride. Oh, I'm just gonna not go do anything. Yeah, no. We had a good. We had a good, good productive God, time this week here in Los crazy, Angeles. Yeah, this week's just we been insane all over the place. But yes. um, if anybody wants to reach out to you who does not already know where to find yes. you, yes. So there's how do they do that? There's Andrew? a few social media. So on Instagram. Every- Take a breath. We're going to have to repeat this like 10 times. <laughs> Pull out your recorders. Pull it out. So on, on Instagram, it's at A-C, and then my last name, M-O-R-R-I-L-L. And uh, Twitter's a little bit easier. It's A-C-M London. And then um, you can also find me on Facebook uh, uh, just under Andrew Morrill. So he, he's all over it. the place. I, I warn you, you're, there are some eye-opening shots, ladies and gentlemen. Yep. There are some eye-opening yes. shots. <laughs> his, mother, his mother has seen them all, so it's okay. It's true. She does. She does. You get, the, you get that sort of uh, raised eyebrow. Oh, oh, that's a that's nice interesting, one. honey. Oh, what are you Poor wearing Debbie. there? <laughs> well, Mom, not really anything, actually. <laughs> yes, my parents the saints. Oh, my God. I bet yeah. that was just a fun little piece when that all started happening. Hey, Mom. Hey, oh, wait. Yeah, I probably should Yeah, I, I, I sort of... Uh, you don't go home and have no, the pictures of no, yourself nude no, hanging on rocks? No, 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 no. <laughs> uh, <laughs> she tells you dressed up yet. in your academy uniform. Not yet. She, my, my, I, I will say that my mom's favorite are the portrait. The portrait photos that I send her, which well, are just those my are the head. Ones. Yes, they're just... Those, those so aren't the ones that pay I, the bills. No, they're they are not. They are not. But um, but they are the ones that mom likes to see. So well, they're all great. Um, <laughs> definitely check him out. Take a look at it, Andrew. I really wish you didn't have to go home. This oh, has been too, too much fun. It's and me too. Th- truthfully, it is a lot easier also when you're just here. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I've loved and, it. I love every minute. That just means that we have to. Uh, get you back so yes. that you can come play in the sun well, again I look and forward eat to it. our food. Oh. Our Twitter, Twitter training relationship will continue. Yes, it will. Social media is really a magical thing when it that actually is. works. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to February this weekend. Have a great Super Bowl weekend. Don't drink too much. Go Seahawks. Y'all have a great weekend. Whatever you're doing, take it one step, one time. We'll see you next week.